Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of Trade Time, and welcome to our webinar on getting a handle on technical analysis. Now, tonight's class is sponsored by a very unique trading platform known as Trade Time, and you can access them at www.tradetime.com and start looking at some of your, their features. They allow you to customize and personalize your entire trading approach. They offer complete account customization, a vast array of trading tools, fund security, and one of the best and easiest platforms out there. They issue free signals daily, and they make everything easy to see and full of information directly to you on the platform. Now you can go to www.tradetime.com and set up a demo account. There's no credit card required, and you can take a you know, free weird test drive around the platform You'll see it's intuitive and user-friendly. They have advanced charts and indicators. You can customize alerts to fit your needs, and you also can set up one-click trading. They issue signals throughout the day, but not only do they suggest what asset you should trade, they tell you the position, they tell you the entry point, what your first objective is, what your second objective, where to put your stop loss, and you can also see all the other traders on the platform and how many of them have traded that signal since it's been issued. So give Trade Time a shot. Go to www.tradetime.com to unleash the trader in you and give their platform a test drive and you'll be surprised how much you like it. Their Trade Time platform is the next generation of platforms. Their platform is specifically devised to converge with their vision of high grade customization while maintaining robust core industry standard features. You get fast execution instant response to trading alerts, advanced charts and customizable indicators, and integrated trading signals, all in a nice intuitive platform. Now tonight's class is being recorded. And if you want to access a copy of tonight's class, give us about 24 hours and then go to www.investing.com, you know, where you signed up for the webinar, locate the education tab, and then look for webinars on demand. So let's get started talking about technical analysis. Now, I'm gonna give you some heads up as we get started here. I use the term security tonight when referring to any tradable financial instrument. These include stocks, bonds, commodities, futures, indices, mutual funds, options. Now, while I may imply a specific investment product, for example, I may say shares, but when I do, it implies to equities, but it also implies to everything that you're trading on a CFD or Forex platform. It just gets boring saying CFD or Forex over and over. So if I jump around, we're all talking about tradable instruments. Similarly, I'll intermix the terms investing and trading. Now, all of us are here tonight because we are what we consider traders. We're looking, looking for short-term trades to make profit. Okay. We're not here talking about long-term investments or your retirement portfolio. Although technical analysis will work great in either one of those. But I just want you to understand, okay, that these are just general terms we're using to make things interesting. Now, should I buy today? What will the prices be tomorrow or next week or next year? Wouldn't investing be easy if we knew the answers to these seemingly simple questions? Alas, if you're attending this class in the hopes that technical analysis has the answer to these questions, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you early. It doesn't. However, if you're attending this webinar with the hopes that technical analysis will improve your investing or trading, I have good news for you. It sure will. It'll help you make better decisions, alert you to possible mistakes, and alert you to trading opportunities. Now, the term technical analysis is a complicated sounding name for a very basic approach to investing or trading. Simply put, technical analysis is the study of prices with charts being the primary tool. Now, I know all of us would like to make this complica complicated strategies. We'd like to use all these indicators and oscillators and these funny names sounding things and make this whole scientific endeavor of technical analysis very complex. But the fact remains that 
technical analysis is anything done on a chart. Whether you're drawing a simple trend line on there, whether you're looking at price action, whether you're drawing a support and resistance line on there, or just looking at a chart, it's all part of technical analysis. And it can be as simple as you want or as complex as you want. And you can start out by simply mastering a chart before you get involved in all of those indicators and oscillators, patterns and everything else. You know, and then you can determine where to go from there. The roots of modern day technical analysis stems from Dow theory. And Dow theory is where all of this actually started. Developed around 1900 by Charles Dow, stemming either directly or indirectly from Dow theory, these roots include such principles as trending natures of prices, prices discounting all known information, confirmation, divergence, volume, mirroring changes in prices, support and resistance. And of course, the widely followed Dow Jones Industrial Average is a direct offspring of the Dow theory. Charles Dow's contribution to modern day technical analysis cannot be understated. His focus on the basic security price movement give rise to a completely new method of analyzing the markets. Now, if we think back a long time ago, we had a few stock markets and we had some futures market for mostly agriculturals. We weren't trading Forex. There was no such thing as CFDs. There was no international, there was no computers, you know, f sending stuff out all over the, you know, we were a bunch of hand chartists, even when I started trading 40 years ago, we were a bunch of hand chartists looking at, you know, our own homemade charts and graphs, trying to get information from around the globe on a ticker tape. So when Dow originally introduced these mathematical calculations and ways to see price movements and trends in the market, he revolutionized how people were trading because people weren't trading, they were invested. Okay. And brokers who would use their own research and they weren't researching trends in the market. They were finding inner workings of companies. They were talking to people, what companies were buying, what they were selling, what their, you know, their profits and loss were. Nobody was looking at price charts. And, you know, so when Dow introduces, he completely revolutionized the entire market and changed the way we think today. Now, the price of security represents a consensus. It is a price at which one person agrees to buy and another person agrees to sell. The price at which an investor is willing to buy or sell depends primarily on his expectations. If he expects the security price to rise, he will buy it. If he expects the security price to fall, he will sell it. And it wasn't until modern day trading that we could actually sell things we didn't own. Because in the old days when it was stocks, you had to buy the stocks. You couldn't sell something you didn't buy, but you would sell to get out of the market. Now, these simple statements are the cause of major challenges in forecasting security prices because they refer to human expectations. And don't confuse yourself. Don't, don't make this overcomplicated because it's our human expectations, our human psychology, and us who are actually affecting the price of the markets. The fact alone will keep any mechanical trading system from working consistently because how you can predict human nature, a computer hasn't decided yet. Because humans are involved, I'm sure that much of the world's investment decisions are based on irrelevant data. And let's forget, let's not leave out the word emotions, fears, our relationship with our family, our neighbors, our employers, the traffic, our income, and our previous success and failures all influence our confidence, expectations, and decisions. And this had very little to do years ago before we had online trading. But now that we have online trading and we have millions and millions and millions of people, human beings, that aren't professional traders doing this full time, that don't know how to secure their emotions, 
we now have a huge human element that affects everyday pricing. There was an article just today on how Bitcoin prices or digital cryptocurrency prices are really just inf that <laughs> are unpredictable because it's just a whim of human nature that's pushing prices up or down because they're not connected to anything. Security prices are determined by money managers and home managers, students and strikers, doctors and dog catchers, lawyers and landscapers, and the wealthy and the wanting. This breadth of market participants guarantees an element of unpredictability and excitement to the marketplace. So now, one of the oldest sayings that we have in technical analysis, the future can be found in the past. If prices are invested on investors' expectations, then knowing what a security should sell for becomes less important than knowing what other investors expect it to sell for. So knowing what it should sell for comes from fundamental analysis. That's the other side of the scientific field here. We have fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Now, that's not to say that knowing what a security should sell for isn't important. It is. But there is usually a fairly strong consensus of the stock's future earnings that the average investor cannot disprove. In my experience, only a minority of technicians can consistently and accurately determine future prices. However, if you are unable to accurately forecast prices, technical analysis can be used consistently to reduce your risk and increase your profits. The best analogy I can find on technical analysis can improve your investing is a roulette wheel. Okay, now don't mix up. I'm not saying that trading is gambling, it isn't. I use this strategy with reservation as gamblers have very little control when compared to investors or traders. Although considering the action of many investors, gambling may be a very appropriate analogy and that is important thing is too many traders are gamblers they don't want to do the study they don't want to do the analysis they want to just toss that ball on the table and hope and pray so a casino makes money on a roulette wheel not by knowing what number will come up next but by slightly improving their odds with the addition of the zero and the double zero similarly when an investor purchases a security, he doesn't know that its price will rise, but he does buy a stock when it is in a rising trend. After a minor sell-off and when interest rates are falling, he will have improved his odds of making a profit. That's not gambling, it's intelligence. Yet many investors buy securities without attempting to control the odds. And what we do with technical analysis is try to reduce the odds. And then when we combine that with risk man management and money management, we're continuing to reduce the odds because we want to make sure that we only make high probability trades. So contrary to popular belief, you do not need to know what a securities price will be in the future to make money. Your goal should simply be to improve the odds of making profitable trades. Even if your analysis is simple, as determined the long, the intermediate, and short-term trends of a security, you will have gained an edge that you would not have without technical analysis. Now, I know when I go to Las Vegas and I see that roulette wheel spinning and spinning around, and they have now all the electronic numbers up there, and I see all the last 10, 20 numbers fell in the top one-third, I know I have a pretty good shot at the middle one third and the next one, or the bottom one third coming up next. Or if I've seen five black or green numbers in a row or red numbers in a row, I have a good shot probability that a red number will come up next because I've calculated my odds. Okay, but that doesn't help us because what happens is we haven't done any statistical analysis. Because we might know that out of every 20 spins, we'll get 10 reds and 10 blacks. Right? 
So I see five blacks. So the odds are in my favor that a red will come up, but it could be six more blacks. Now, have I calculated my money? Have I calculated my risk and reward? And can I stay in that market long enough for that asset to come in my favor? So you need to apply strategy and intelligence to reduce the odds. And this is what takes trading and investing away from gambling. Okay. Now, a lot of us out there think, ah, you know what? I can get all the automated trading. I can get robots. I can look at a printout of what somebody's telling me to do because the computer's calculated this. If we accept the fact that human emotions and expectations play a role in security pricing, we should also admit that our emotions play a role in our decision making. Many investors try to remove their emotions from their investing by using computers to make decisions for them. The concept of a how, like from 2001 Space Odyssey, is very appealing. Mechanical trading systems technically employ technical analysis. And they can help us remove our emotions from our decisions. Computer, computer testing is also useful to determine what has happened historically under various conditions to help us optimize our trading techniques. Yet since we are analyzing a less than logical subject, which involves human emotions and expectations, we must be careful that our mechanical systems don't mislead us into thinking that we're analyzing a logical entity. So there are lots of parts of technical analysis that can be computerized, but it still takes you understanding all the pieces of information, be able to understand these indicators and oscillators, these chart patterns, to be able to see what the human being is doing. Because price action ultimately dictates the results. But this is not to say that computers aren't wonderful technical analysis tools, but that's what they are as a tool. They are indispensable. In my totally biased opinion, technical analysis software has done more to level the playing field for the average investor than any non-regulatory event. But as a provider of technical analysis tools, I caution you not to let the software lull you into believing markets are as logical and predictable as a computer. Technical analysis is based almost entirely on the analysis of price and volume. The field which defines the securities price and volume are we're going to talk about in detail tonight. Technical analysis involves looking at patterns in price history to determine the higher probability time and place to enter and exit a trade. As a result, technical analysis is one of the most widely used types of analysis. Since online trading is in most cases involves only major assets, the movement on a chart from the price action generally gives us clues about hidden levels of supply and demand. Technical analysis is a bit of a misnomer since it is really not that technical. A better name for the use of charts to make investment decisions might be risk reward analysis or even market psychology, or I just call it chartist and charting. Okay. Because for some reason, people think technical analysis is something different than being able to read a chart and put information on a chart. But at its core, it's only being able to put information on your charts. Sure, there are some more complex mathematical concepts involved with some of its more esoteric indicators. But at its core, technical analysis is simply a method of determining if an asset is worth buying or selling. Once we identify this way, we are ahead, way ahead of the game regard with regards to assembling a winning portfolio. So what is technical analysis? Simply stated, technical analysis is a study of data generated from the market from the action of people in the market. Such data includes, includes price levels that have served as turning points in the past. In other words, what we call swing lows and swing highs or support and resistance levels. The amounts of stock or assets being bought and sold each day is called volume. Now imagine if you knew a level that was important or a price that was important to the traders, 
say for the euro US dollar, say we knew 117.775 was a very important level. And we saw the euro US dollar D approaching it and we can look at volume. In other words, we see lots and lots of contracts being exchanged, lots of people buying into the marketplace. Well, does that tell you you're pretty safe buying that asset at that level? And the rate of change in price movement over a given time span. Now, if price slowly moved up to that 1775 or just for some reason it just bursts up there, we would want to know the difference, the momentum. So technical analysis also attempts to measure the collective investor psyche, calling heavily on psychology of crowds and the cycle of greed and fear. If everyone thinks one way, the odds that the market thinks the other is usually high. Was investor sentiment ever as negative as it was in March of 2009 when the markets put in the most important bottom? That's when the market crash was all going on, remember? Critics will find that forecasting future price movements based on past price movement is akin to reading tea leaves or divining the future from the texture of chicken entrails. Many of the high priests of fundamental analysis are quick to call technical analysis the world's alchemy. Indeed, chart watchers cannot predict the future any better than your broker, your spouse, or your Ouija board. But the fact is, no matter how, why, what's going to tell you to enter a trade, what's going to tell you that you should be buying Apple or selling Google or buying the euro or selling Bitcoin, okay? however you make that decision, whether you're using a Ouija board, whether you're using your next door neighbor's, you know, son's brother's, you know, predictive analysis, whether, you know, however you're doing it, still, you'd still need to have a lot more information because buying or selling of an asset is just the first step. How do you know where you would take your profit? How do you know where you'd put your stop loss? How do you know where to actually, what price to actually buy? If I said to you, buy Apple, it's going to go up. Okay. Well, if you're going to be an imbecile, just go out, call, you know, go online and buy Apple. Well, what happens by the time you went online and bought Apple, it had already gone up and you're buying way too high. Or how do you know when it's time to sell Apple after you bought it? You're going to get this from your charts and the patterns on charts and your technical analysis. But what they can do better than most is make a decision about what to do, buy, sell, or hold, based on the probabilities of action of others given certain conditions. In other words, if a pattern on a chart appears, a chart watcher can create a framework for what the market might do if and when the price breaks free from what the pattern. It does not work every time, but past performance does give us an idea of what will happen so that we can do something about it and, and especially be prepared. So what we use in technical analysis are several pieces of information. And almost all technical analysis is based on price action only. Okay, so we start with the open. This is the price of the first trade of the period. We need the open. We also need the highest for that period. So we're looking at a 15 minute chart, which most of us 15 or a half hour is what most of us are using for CFD trading. We wanna be aware of the open price for that 15 minutes or that half hour. We wanna be aware of the highest period it went during that 15 or a half hour period. We wanna be prepared for the low, the lowest point that security traded during that period and the close, where it closed. Because number one, it's gonna tell us a, the battle of the bulls and the bears over that period. And we're gonna be able to see how price has been moving. Whether we're using a bar chart, whether you were using a line chart, or whether we're using a Japanese candlestick chart, we still need to see how price is moving. So these four pieces of information, the open, the high, the low, and the close, for that period are important. But also, maybe we wanna see what the open, the high, the low, and the close for the whole day. Maybe we want to see what it's been for the whole week so that we can properly analyze what is happening. We combine that with things like volume. This is the number of shares or contracts that were traded during that period. The relationship between price and volume. So in other words, 
if you see price moving up and volume is moving with it, that means that price should continue moving up because the buyers are jumping in the market. They're still coming in the market and they're still positive. When you see the volume start to wane, not the fall, but just to wane, then we're losing buyers in the marketplace. That means that upward movement's getting questioned. When we see buying fall, that means there's a good chance that that asset's gonna reverse itself or the buyers are moving to the sidelines. So weakening volume predict the end of an uptrend. And then open interest, this is the total number of outstanding contracts. Okay, of a future and option. Open interest is often used as a very good indicator because what are we doing? We're analyzing the psychology and the emotion of the people that are jumping into the marketplace. Then of course we have bid and ask. Bid price is the price a market maker is willing to pay for a security. Ask price is the price the market maker is willing to accept for the security. Okay. But all of this is found on your charts. So the foundation of technical analysis is the chart. In this case, a study, a picture truly is worth a thousand words. Price can be displayed as line charts, bar charts, or candlestick charts. Okay. But a bar chart and a candlestick chart show the same information. It show the open, the high, the low, and the close, just in different types of format. Now, a line chart, which we're looking at now, shows you relatively nothing except the general move of the market. So a simple line chart draws a line from one closing price to the next. We strung together with a line and we can see the general price movement of a currency pair or an asset over a period of time. A line chart strength comes from its simplicity. It provides an uncluttered, easy to understand view of a securities price. But that's it, no other information. Then we go to a bar chart, which is my favorite time to chart, which gives us the open, the high, the low, and the close in an easy to see visual format. And each one of those lines indicates the open, the high, the low, and the close for the period in which you're looking at. Okay. A bar chart is a little bit more complex than a line chart. It shows the open and closing prices as well as the highs and lows. The bottom of the vertical bar indicates the lowest price traded in that time period, while the top of the bar indicates the highest price. The horizontal hash on the left side indicates the opening price, and on the right side has the closing price. Then we go to candlesticks, which are the most complex of the basic charting types. And these contain the same information as a bar chart, the open, the high, the low, and the close. But it's they're colored in, these bodies of the candles. And unfortunately, the reds and the greens don't tell you that much. Okay. And these have a psychological effect on the traders using them. Candlesticks are very, very good but it's the size and the shape of the body of the candle and its relationship to the previous and the next candle that determine something and these patterns that we find in the candles. Okay, you have to learn what these candles mean and then they become one of the best charting services you, or charting techniques you can use. So if you notice here, we have a bar chart and a candlestick chart. They give you the same information okay. and Although a bar chart and a line chart are quite popular among Western traders, Japanese candlestick charts and additional patterns were introduced to the Western financial markets about the 1990s. Because, and they became very popular now that we have computers and everybody's computerized trading because otherwise candlesticks were difficult to draw by hand. Now the popular candlestick charts have soared among Western market analysts over the past few decades because of its highly accurate predictive nature. Candlestick charts can play a crucial role in better understanding price action and order flow in the financial markets. So again, we have the same information, the open, the high, the low, and the close, but we have a bullish candle and a bearish candle. The bullish candle can be colored in with green or left as white, and the bearish candle will be colored in as red or black. And these tell us something about the battle between the bulls and the bears in the marketplace. So before you read a candlestick chart, you must understand the basic struggle of the structure of a single candle. Each candle accounts for a specific time period. It could be one minute, 60 minutes, a daily or weekly. Regardless of the time period, a candlestick represents four distinct values on a chart. The open, the high, the low, and the close. So bar charts versus candlesticks. As you can see, 
they tell you the same thing and you can read the same thing into it because on a bar chart, if you step up the ladder from the open to the close, that's the same thing as a bullish candle. If you step down the ladder from the open to close, the same thing as a bearish candle. It's just the color and the here can't bar charts don't have any analysis between the difference between the open and the close where the candlestick shows you the body and gives you all the different patterns between or the combination between different bodies of candles next to each other. But technical analysis is the study of historical price action in order to identify patterns and determine probabilities of future movement in the market through the use of technical studies, indicators, and other analysis tools. Technical analysis boils down to two things, identifying trends and identifying support and resistance through the use of price charts and other timeframes. So markets can only move in three directions. They can move up, they can move down, or they can move sideways. Prices typically move in more of a zigzag fashion, and as a result, price action has two states, ranging when prices zigzag sideways, or they're trending. They're either moving an uptrend or a downtrend, and prices zigzag higher and lower. Now, most people think the market should move like this, or a trend should move like that, straight up. But the markets don't. They move in push and ease, push and ease. And being able to determine if these pushes and eases are proper trend indicators or indicating a reversal become very important. And you can do this with technical analysis tools. But understanding a trend, seeing a trend on a chart, understanding a trend line, and seeing the direction of the markets are the basics of all technical analysis. Technical analysis of a market can help you determine not only when and where to enter a market, but much more importantly, when and where to get out of the market. Technical analysis is based on the theory that markets are chaotic. And they sure do. In other words, mathematical chaos theory proves that within a state of chaos, there are identifiable, identifiable patterns that tend to repeat. This type of chaotic behavior is observed in nature in the form of weather forecasts. For example, most traders will admit that there is no certainty when it comes to predicting exact price movements. As a result, successful trading is not about being right or wrong. It's about determining probabilities and taking trades when the odds are in your favor. Part of determining probability involves forecasting market direction and when or where to enter a position but equally important to determining your risk to reward ratio. Now remember, there is no magical combination of technical indicators that will unlock some sort of secret trading strategy. Now there's lots of gurus in the market preaching that stuff. If you learn after a while that it's risk management, money management, because statistically you'll make some good trades and you'll make some bad trades. If you're looking at price action, you'll be right or wrong most of the time, some of the time or all of the time. The fact is, if you can limit your losses and limit your risk so that when you make your losses, you lose a small amount, and then you can ride your profitable trades to maximum profit. So if you have five losing trades and three profitable trades, at the end of the day, as long as you net out a net profit, you had a good day. So the secret of successful trading is good risk management, discipline, and the ability to control your emotions. Anyone can guess right and win every once in a while, but without risk management, it's virtually impossible to remain profitable over time. Since chart watching is not infallible, an even more important aspect is that it will tell us quickly if our assessment of the market mood is incorrect or it changes. For example, if price moves higher from a triangle pattern in the chart, then fall back within that pattern, we will know that when we were incorrect in our decision. Now, there are certain formulas that will tell you when we see this chart pattern develop, 
And a triangle is one of the most popular chart patterns out there. That at some point, as price converges and the traders get stuck in this triangle, that at some point it's going to break out. We're not sure if it's going to break out up or down. But we can also calculate the momentum of the breakout based on the site of its recent move. When we can correlate that with volume and we see price break out and we see a jump in volume, that means traders are going to continue pushing that asset in that direction. So what have you used? You use a little bit of technical analysis to help you find a trading opportunity by seeing a pattern on your charts. So if it does the opposite or if it breaks out, but the volume doesn't support it, then there's something wrong with our original decision. Either we miss something on the chart or the market simply changes its mind. So we would sell immediately and book our small losses. So if this were to break out and didn't do what we thought it was doing, we bought this, we just get out of the market. We want to make sure that we minimize our risk every time. And we can do this, fortunately, by placing what's called a stop loss. Basic chart analysis is rather easy. Let's lay out a set of basic yet powerful tools so when you can combine things like technical tests on security, you might be interested. So here we can see a simple moving average, which is about one of the most simple indicators you can use. And a moving average just takes all the noise out of price movement. And when we see price breaking above or below that moving average, it's telling us something about the markets. We can set what we call resistance and support levels based on price where the price had been supported before. When price was falling down, what price did it come to that it bounced off of? When price was rising, what price did it reach that it wasn't able to break through? And then we can see things like patterns. Here we have a double bottom. Price touched its bottom, moved back up crossed above the moving average, came back to form that bottom again, bounced off of it. That tells us we're probably in a very strong rally upward. Okay. Again, we moved here to a double bottom. It came down to support as price was falling, bounced off of it, came back up to that moving average line, wasn't able to break above it, came back and formed that same bottom, and bounced off of it and moved back into an uptrend. Okay. These are not complex, calculated mathematical formulas. These are the basics of technical analysis. And again, when we combine that with volume, okay, we kind of can see what everybody else is doing. While professional technical analysis have dozens, if not hundreds of tools at their disposal, it all boils down to three steps. Seeing where the security is currently trading, figuring out how it got there, determining the power of the trend and making comparisons of the asset to its peers in other industries or even if it's in its own history. To do this, all that is needed is some basic key technical tools. Trends and trend lines. There is no secret to finding a trend. In fact, a trend is easy to see. Then finding a trend line. Trend lines have rules. And it's the first part of analyzing the market that has a very specific rule. Okay, And when you can draw the same trend line that everybody else is drawing, you start to know what prices will become important to the market as price moves in its trend in the direction it's going. Then support and resistance. These are terms that simply tell us what price levels are likely to bring out buyers or sellers. So to do this, all that is needed are some key basic technical tools. Moving averages. Many investors watch moving averages 50 and 200 days. If we're trading in what we're trading you know, in, um, CFDs and Forex, we might be using a nine day or a 26 period or a nine period, short term 30 and 60 and 90 day moving averages. Okay. And these help us take the noise out. But when price moves above the moving average and not far below them, tells us something more about the trend. We combine this with volume and momentum. These are two indicators that confirm the health of a trend and warn us of an impending change. They help us see if the desire to own a stock is growing or contracting or getting a bit overzealous. Then we have relative performance. These are simple ratios of performance of a relevant market index or, in, or industry group. So now we can develop a step-by-step -step process. Now that we have the theory and the tools, let's look at the process of going from an idea 
to actually deciding to buy or sell. So look at the trend. We want to just look for a rising trend to see if it just started rising and how far it rose. Then we want to find the nearby support and resistance levels. We're trying to find stocks that demand exceeds supply or new supply is not likely to develop soon. Then determine if the current trend is healthy. We want to price the prices to be a relevant moving average, but not so far above the stock is prone to snap back and decline. So if we see it moving above the trend line, okay, coming up to resistance or breaking a support line or breaking a resistance line, and it's trading above its moving average, we might want to buy. Then we'll check the volume and the momentum indicators to make sure the other buyers are pushing the markets up and remaining in the market to confirm our theory. So now we've got a trading candidate and of all the asset, the asset passes all of these tests, we have a candidate to trade, just a candidate. But this is the basics of technical analysis. Now, Chart patterns go everything from a head and shoulders pattern to a teacup to triangles to wedges. You have to learn them all. Indicators, okay. Yes, we have volume, which is pretty simple, but then we have volume indicators. We have momentum indicators. We have overbought and oversold indicators. These range from RSI to stochastics to MACD to ADX. There's hundreds of these in the marketplace. Okay, We can use all of these and make it as complex or simple as we want. We can make it as specialized, but this is the basis of technical analysis, is seeing price action on a chart, determining where price will go, applying risk management, and making sure we get only high probability trades. So on that note, I'm going to say goodnight to you all. Thank you very much. I hope you learned a little bit about technical analysis and how you might want to start using it. Good night now, and thank you for joining us, and thank you for supporting Trade Time. And investing.com. And remember, if you want to learn more about technical analysis, Trade Time offers an extensive education program, and you can attend their webinars, watch their videos, read their ebooks, and get some one-on-one -on -one help from their technical team. So good night now, and thank you very much. Bye now.